Hello my soccer universe for some Serie A talk. Um, it's kind of colder still in the office. Uh, so I'm heating up so I decided to do this in my Milan track suit. That fits actually with this jersey or quite nicely. I'm of course wearing Milan because Milan is has played uh, away from home and of course in white so it's all fitting there. Um, before we get into last week's action, we have uh, last weekend's action, we have to go back a week because um, shortly after I posted the video, the news came out that Roma fielded a non eligible youth player and it was an administrative error, which, yeah. You know, if you break the rules and it's easy to punish, you can always get punished. Um, so uh, Romas uh, had to forfeit the game and it's 3-0 to Verona. Pretty big punishment, I have to say. Uh, for, yeah, it's an error, but you know, 3-0. Put Verona right up top uh, towards the table. So with that in mind, we go back to that <laughs> very soon. Let's talk about what happened on the weekend. I actually realized that except for one game, I saw a little bit of every game this weekend uh, and I have to kind of pace myself to not uh, talk too much. But we have to talk Torino Atalanta because that was setting off a really a round of goals, 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 goals. If the first week was not as much with goals, this week gave us goals galore in a way. Uh, and Torino actually started quite well against Atalanta with um, Sasa hitting, I think, the uh, bar in the seventh minute. And Belotti uh, is set up by Rincon to make it 1-0 Torino. And it all looked good until Papo Gomez uh, decided, no, we are Atalanta. We are one of the uh, best teams in Italy. He gets the ball from Zapata, walks in midfield a little bit, finds a nice lane to shoot. 13th minute, it's 1-1, and from that moment on, it was all Atalanta. Muriel, uh, again, Papu Gomez assisting, he had an amazing first half. Um, in the 21st, so no, 10 minutes later, had turned the game around, and then again, Gomez sets up uh, Hattabur, just before the half, to uh, make it 3-1. Uh, you thought the game is over, but then um, Belotti actually manages to put one in, was a kind of kind of a messy goal. So Belotti also off the schneid because he has not been scoring in Serie A for a long time. It's three to it to have. Highly entertaining game. It remained uh, entertaining, but it was Atalanta who called the shots and they when they get the fourth to the run of the 54th. It was more or less game over. Um, I actually had more the feeling that if there's another goal score, it will be more Atalanta, then it will be Torino. Uh, I did not see much of Cagliari against Lazio, only a little bit to see that um, yeah, the Cagliari home jersey is a little bit of a mess. And why did Lazio play there in their uh, neon jerseys? It hurt the eyes to watch that game, to be honest. And that reminds me, Serie A jersey review, uh, first video coming, first video, videos, I don't know yet, uh, coming up this weekend. Um, Lazio winning this 2-0, Lazzari gets an early goal and then Immobile also gets uh, on the scoring sheet in the first game for Lazio this season. Uh, a big story was definitely Sampdoria against Benevento because within 20 minutes Sampdoria was up two goals and everyone thought, yep, poor Benevento, poor Pippo Inzaghi will uh, be beaten severely. Anything but... Benevento got back into the game. Uh, Caldiarol in the 33rd uh, pulled one goal back. The goals by Sampdoria through Cagliarella and Colli. Uh, and Caldiarol uh, even equalized in the 72nd minute. Um, at this point, Sampdoria they had multiple chances to convert and were actually really pressing forward. But it's Letizia who gets the win for Benevento. And both Inzaghi brothers playing at the same time. Both in Saga Brothers winning. I'm really looking forward to Benevento against Lazio because that's gonna be a big one. What I heard, the father of the uh, father in Saga, Papa in Saga, uh, it was too much for him that people then also won and he broke out in tears. Game of the weekend, no doubt, no doubt about it, Inter against Fiorentina. And before we talk about the game, can we all hail Frank Ribery? Uh, 
amazing game. He was the best player on the pitch. Uh, and Fiorentina gets very early the leading goal. It looked, it smelled like offside, but it never was. Um, the ball coming to Kouame and Bonaventura, but Kouame doesn't touch it, so Bonaventura, who is not offside, can play back to Kouame. 1-0 Fiorentina. And I have to say, the uh, Ribéry already in the first half really, really uh, had uh, created chances and it was down. Especially Kouame missed a few sitters in the first half. Um, yes, there were also chances for Inter. It was um, rather even fair, but I actually had the feeling that uh, Fiorentina has somewhat control over Inter. Uh, that all changes when uh, Lautaro fires one from the edge of the box deep in stoppage time, make it 1-1. And then I couldn't watch the game anymore. So everything else from now I can tell you highlights because for somehow the stream got hung, hung up and I got stuck with Betis against Real Madrid, which was also not that bad. Uh, while I was still trying to um, get the game going, two goals were scored. Ceccarini with an own goal puts Inter in the lead. But Castrovilli, after a great assist by Ribéry, but not his best of the evening, <laughs> uh, makes it 2-2. The best of the evening was a sensational through ball in the 63rd from Ribéry to Chiesa. Uh, that masterful pass cuts right through the Inter defense. Chiesa alone in goal on goal and makes it 3-2 for Fiorentina. So, Fiorentina, one up, then one down, one up again. And it will become the perfect game uh, because Inter then turns it around, which is not perfect for me. Inter throws on, I mean, basically, all the new Hakimi, Vidal comes on, Nain Golan, Alexis Sanchez, I mean, everything gets uh, uh, thrown on. And then Maybe a substitution that hurt Fiorentina because um, Cotrone comes on for Ribéry. I love Cotrone, but he's not Ribéry. And I don't know if that broke the rhythm of the game, but I know that Hakimi sets up Lukaku for the equalizer in 87 and two minutes later then Lexi Sanchez finds D'Ambrosio to get a winner for Inter. Heartbreaking for Fiorentina. Heartbreaking for, for Fiorentina. Because they definitely would have deserved the draw, but it was a great game. Seven goal thriller. And really, the way you want to have it. Constant lead changes. Uh, game, uh, it's just made. Game may, may made in heaven, except for, at least for this Milan fan, the result was not to my liking. And you know, Fiorentina has a few Milan uh, play, former Milan players or, or already. And I really would like to have this Chiesa in the Milan squad. That would be the cherry on top for this uh, transfer campaign, I have to say. As I said, I didn't see much of sports. Spezia, Sassuolo, except the Sassuolo ran all over Spezia. I saw a little bit of Hellas against Udine. What a glorious jersey matchup. Uh, with Udine playing in yellow and white against uh, Verona's uh, uh, blue kit, Favilli gets the winner. I think we don't need to talk much more. Uh, I think it was... Uh, it was a decent, but no, no, the great game. We definitely need to talk about Napoli. Um, I said before the season, and I did not, you know, because I thought that this Oshiman guy will go the Pepe way, but Oshiman changed Na Napoli. I said before the season, it will be uh, Inter, Juve, Atalanta, Milan, something like that, or Milan, Atalanta. I think Napoli seriously enters the Champions League uh, conversation. Uh, it will be a dogfight. It will be a dogfight. It's not a given uh, to me that uh, any of those uh, who will be out of the top four. Uh, Lozano, set up by Mertens, makes it 1-0. Then uh, maybe the one downturn for Napoli is that Insigne had to come, come, come off. Uh, probably the pulled muscle or something, something like that. But the second half, Genoa, who actually started brightly against Cordona last weekend, uh, completely mauled by Napoli. Zielinski is set up by Oshimane right after, after half. Zielinski then sets up Mertens for the third one in the 57th. Mertens then sets up Lozano, which we had already before. Lozano scoring twice. He doesn't score that often. Elmas in the 69th. And at that moment, I mean, uh, Genoa trying to catch their breath. In the 72nd, Di Lorenzo sets up Politano and that ends the goal scoring. Uh, but I honestly have to say if Napoli won it, they could have scored many, many, many more. Um, absolutely dominant performance by Napoli. Milan, nothing dominant. I mean, the big story is that Corona has to now deal with Zlatan, um, which means Zlatan is out of the squad. 
And yeah, uh, Milan playing in what I call the Scarlet Fever jerseys again, jersey review coming this weekend. Uh, getting a workman like win. I mean, can see a penalty in stoppage time and then Brahim Diaz with his first goal. And then it's, you know, Milan was the better team. Crotone uh, did not have too many chances. The one thing that worries me a little bit is Rebic's in injury. Uh, fortunately, nothing's broken, but he might, uh, you know, he will not, not be available this week. Uh, he, maybe for the derby he will come come back, but it looked ugly. I thought he had dislocated the elbow or something. It looked ugly. I couldn't watch it. But, you know, a rather unexciting uh, win with unexciting jerseys, but I'm happy Milan gets two wins in a row. And when was that? The last time. Uh, setting them up for actually quite a good start to the season. Another big game, and again, I decided Spain, no, I should have stayed with Roma Juve. Uh, really good game. Um, I thought, you know, I was, my focus was on Barcelona, but I always glanced over. And I always thought that Juve was maybe a little bit more proactive in the game, but uh, Roma played it really well. Uh, hit them on, on the counter, made spaces tight and actually tried to counteract um, Juve's troubles um, and it was come first it were two penalties pretty two clear handball penalties uh, that gave um, kind of opened the game a little bit first Vera 2 makes it 1-0 for Roma and then Cristiano Ronaldo uh, also gets um, uh, a penalty that he can score home and he didn't sell very seemingly the, a, a young referee died, and I think that kind of sombered the mood of everyone. Uh, crucially, though, is that Rabio, his handball was given a yellow card, whereas um, the uh, Pellegrini did not get a yellow card for his handball. So uh, that was interesting. And then with a storming counterattack in stoppage time, Vere 2 actually makes it 2 1 for Roma, um, setting them really up uh, very nicely. I have to say, it's nice to watch Juve and Roma in their first jerseys. And this Roma jersey is growing on me. Again, jersey review coming soonish. Uh, then seemingly the deciding moment, I mean, in the second half, it was really Roma who was pushing uh, Juve to, to the brink, especially uh, Dzeko, who coincidentally would have almost en ended up with Juve, now has to stay at Roma, uh, having chances and was clearly helped by Rabio signing off with a second yellow. Pellegrini got also a, sec a, a yellow card later. So kind of, yeah, I don't know uh, why one gets a yellow and the other one not. But then um, that actually freed Juventus and it was Ronaldo who lifted Juventus up and, you know, Danilo Cross and Ronaldo hangs in the air again, makes it 2-2. Um, Roma tried to find fire and the winner, but I think Juventus pulled through and gets out a draw with which they can be very, very happy. And then in the last game of the season, uh, of the week, not of the season, uh, Bologna completely dominated Parma. Uh, Soriano scoring two goals. The first one, uh, Seppe, uh, gets the ball behind the line. The second one was nicely de deflected. Uh, Skov Olsen makes it 3 0, and then I actually didn't follow the game anymore. I was then fully on Liverpool or, or Arsenal, which was pretty awesome. I'll talk about Prem Premier League uh, in the next video, which we'll probably post um, Wednesday morning. Uh, the other goals, Hernani, and very late, uh, Palazzo. Uh, gets the winner and uh, Parma player is sent off. Which now the standings and on the second day they still don't say much. Um, Napoli and Milan are on front. Juve dropped some points. Uh, we have to see now, uh, we will see the mid midweek games how Inter will uh, and Lazio and so on will move in there and Atalanta will move in there as well. Uh, if we look at the chances, the champions, the odds on favorites for the Champions spots are of course uh, Inter and Juve, but then it's Napoli and Milan egg just ahead of Atalanta, but this is going to be a dogfight. So yes, we have some midweek games. Uh, not sure how many I will see of these, but we'll have Benevento against Inter, Lazio against Atalanta is a really interesting one, but at the same time we have Champions League. Maybe i put it on second screen there and Udine against Spezia. And on the weekend, and this is again the way I have it at the moment, we have uh, at least two great matchups. I mean, it starts off with Fiorentina Sampdoria, where Fiorentina finally should, uh, oh, no, they already have, have, have a Schultz weekend, but it's all about Lazio Inter at 3 o'clock and Juve Nap Napoli late on Sunday. Uh, 
wonderful matchups. Serie A really starts with a bang this season. We already and Lazio having two very difficult home home games. And note that the first games in the Olimpico uh, feature as hosts first Juventus, now Atalanta, and then Inter. I find this very interesting. Anyway. Let me know what you thought about Serie A um, weekend. I think it was a great Serie A weekend with many storylines, maybe not as contentious as in other leagues, but we had lots of goals and many good games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.